All right, in this video, we will continue studying the properties of rectangles. For number nine, we are given that this is a rectangle, and we're given the measure of angle one. And basically, we have to find all the other angles. All right, so witness the domino effect. If angle number one is 37, then um, because of the way the diagonals bisect each other and are congruent, these four segments are always going to be congruent. That makes this uh, an isosceles triangle. So um, that means both of these will be 37 up here as well, 37 and 37. But um, if you see the Z with me for a moment, all right, see the Z happening like so. All right, you have parallel lines cut by a transversal. Um, your alternate interior angles will be congruent. All right, so that's going to jump down here and cause this angle to be congruent to this angle, all right, because um, alternate interior angles. So this is also going to be 37 for that reason. Okay, um, so that's going to, um, again, isosceles triangles here. So the, these uh, two angles will also be congruent. So that's going to be 37. So I have all four of these angles now. Now I can also get um, angle 6 because um, the sum of the angles in a triangle have to be 180. So I'm looking at this triangle right here, uh, all right, the, the triangle with the 3, the 6, and the 4 in it. So if I subtract, so if I go 180 minus 37 minus 37, okay, and see what's left over. Okay, that leaves 106. All right, so angle 6 up here has to be 106. All right, and of course, these are um, a linear pair, okay? I'm looking at angle 6 and angle 7. All right, let me just draw them off to the side to make it more obvious. So you see angle 6 and 7 meet like this, like a slanted T. So I'm just going to make it more obvious off by itself. Okay, so angle 6 is right here, and it's 106. And then there's angle 7 is right here. Um, but these are a linear pair, all right? They're making a straight line. So you know that they have to add up to be 100. I'm sorry, they have to make 180. All right, so if I subtract from 180, the 106, All right, I mean, obviously, we don't need a calculator for this. All right, that's going to leave 74 degrees. All right, now remember, I was really finding angle 7 right here. So angle 7 up there, maybe I'll change colors for a second. Angle 7 um, is 74 degrees. Okay, now... Now it's time to look at angle 2 and angle 5, because th they're both uh, having the same thing going on. Um, angle H here, for example, is 90 degrees. It's a rectangle. Um, so I've got a total of 90 degrees, but part of that is 37 degrees. So if I subtract 37 from 90, that should leave angle 5. So I'm just talking about doing 90 minus 37. All right, that's 53. All right, so that means angle 5 here is 53 degrees. And that's going to be the same thing as uh, angle 2 over here. This will also be 53 for the same reason. These two have to add up to 90, and they're the same numbers. And that's it. I think we found everything. Okay, so here are all the angles together. 
All right, anyway, moving on. Number 10. All right, the coordinates of a rectangle are given. So let's see, we have negative 1, comma 2 would be right there. All right, and that's P. And then 3, comma 2 would be right there, and that's Q. 3, comma, negative 1 would be right there, and that is R. And then negative 1, negative 1 would be right here, and that is S. Okay, so clearly we have a rectangle happening. Um, use the distance formula to show that the diagonals are congruent. Okay, so the diagonals are PR and SQ. Okay, so we have to, sh um, let's uh, find PR and let's find SQ and see that they're equal. First of all, let's remember the distance formula is the square root of um, x minus x squared plus y minus y squared. So um, one of my diagonals is PR. So let's go ahead and use the distance formula on that. So right now we're doing PR. So here's P and here is R. So these are the X's and the Y's that we're talking about. Um, so this will be our X1 and our Y1 and this will be our X2 and our Y2. So just using the formula, okay, so that's going to give me um, 3 minus negative 1. Notice it's a negative 1, so I'm doing 3 minus negative 1, so be real careful. All right, plus, now I'm going to do y minus y. So that's going to be negative 1 minus 2. Okay, and let's find out what that is. All right, so we have the square root of, and then we have 3 minus negative 1 squared. So 3 minus negative 1 squared plus negative 1 minus 2 squared. So it'll be negative 1 minus 2 squared. All right, that turns out to be 5. Okay, so, so that's one of our diagonals is PR, right? We just found out that that is 5. So the other diagonal is SQ. So let's see if that, that's also 5. Okay, so now we're going to do SQ. Okay, so here's Q and here is S. All right, so this will be my x1 and my y1, and this will be my x2 and my y2. It doesn't matter which one of these points you pick to be um, point 0.1 or point 0.2. You'll get the same answer either way. Okay, so x minus x first. So that will be negative 1 minus 3 squared. Now y minus y, so that will be negative 1 minus 2 squared. All right, let's see if that's 5. Okay, square root. Um, so here we go again. Square root of negative 1 minus 3. So there's negative 1 minus, whoa, parentheses. Okay, negative 1 minus 3 squared plus open parentheses and it was negative 1 minus 2 close parentheses squared and again that is 5 okay so um, we have shown them to be congruent 
using the distance formula. So that is number 10. Um, now number 11 is a proof. Let's see what we have. Um, given RSTV is a rectangle and U is the midpoint of VT. Okay, U is the midpoint. All right, that means by the definition of midpoint, um, VU and UT will be congruent. All right, mm -hmm. it's a rectangle. Okay, so because it's a rectangle, that gives us a lot of information. Um, by the definition of a rectangle, um, we know that all of the uh, angles will be right angles, including V and T. Um, so let's, let's see what they say. So first of all, RSTV is a rectangle. Okay, that was given, obviously. Now, U is the midpoint of VT. That was also given. Okay, what do they say next? The right angle theorem. The right angle theorem says that all right angles are congruent. So they must want us to say that um, angle V is congruent to angle T. All right? Um, because that would require the right angle theorem. All right angles are congruent. So let's say that. Um, angle V is congruent to angle T. Okay. Definition of midpoint. Well, U was the midpoint, and by definition, VU is congruent to UT. All right, number five says opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. Okay, so what are these opposite sides? Well, that's RV and ST are opposite sides. So that would make sense to mark those. So RV is congruent to ST. Okay, now do we have enough information to show that triangle RUV is congruent to triangle SUT? Okay, RUV, SUT. Um, why would these triangles be congruent? Side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. And uh, that was it. That's what we were supposed. To, that's what we were supposed to prove. So that's it for number eleven. And uh, that's going to be the end of this video, uh, because that was in fact the last problem. So I hope this video was helpful, you guys. I will see you on the next video.